the Silver Sage Yoga and Wellness. I'm Carolyn Bolain, founder and teacher of these practices that are designed especially for seniors. And I want to record the date of this video because we're in a very challenging time in our nation's history. April 22nd, 2020, and it is Earth Day, celebrating our Earth. It's so important that we stay connected during this time and support and encourage each other. And these practices that you're, we're going to do today are going to build up your immune system, lower your blood pressure, build stronger bones, and help you relax and release tension. So let's begin. We're going to begin with the upper torso. So let's cut. And I, first, I want to show you my props that I have. And I'm hoping that you will be coming back to this video more than once. So next time, maybe you'll have all your props ready. But don't worry about it today if, if you don't have everything ready. But I have a sturdy chair that we may use. If you don't want to stand, you can use the chair. This is a Zafu that I sit on to elevate my hips. But you could easily sit in a, in a chair in your home or a folding chip. I also have a strap which you may or may not choose to use, a couple of blocks which we use in our classes, and then a blanket to cover yourself at the end of the session when we have relaxation. So those are things you can have on hand, but really all you need to do is to come to the mat or, or a chair with inspiration ready to move forward get your body moving and when your body starts moving your mind moves and the brain is st stimulated so let's get started i'm in my seventh decade and it's my passion to share my keys to quality longevity with you because we have to stay connected and encourage and support each other so come to standing on the mat or seated in your chair, and we're gonna start with the upper torso. We're really gonna wake up the joints and glands. I call this the awakening part of the series. So let's just bring the arms up, hold them up, stretch up, reach up. Just reach your right hand up, elongating the right side of your body, release the shoulder back down, and then go to the left side. Stretch and lengthen. And now bring both arms up, spread your fingers wide. Get heat in the pads of your hands, inhale. And then we're gonna exhale and slightly bend the knees as you bring the arms down. And then inhale up, as you inhale, come up. Pull the navel into the spine to protect your low back. You're just beginning to wake in the body. Inhale and exhale. Again, inhale and exhale now inhale come up let's hold the arms up and bring the arms out to the side with the palms up we're going to be pressing the thumbs back behind us i'll turn around so you can get a feeling of what's happening in the shoulders and in the back arms are up shoulder level move the thumbs back until you feel heat across the chest so leave the arms up there. We're gonna start vibrating these arms. So just start moving your hands up and down, up and down. Just keep going. You can open and close the fist if you choose. Waking up the joints and glands. You can turn the palms down like, like you're patting somebody's head with your hands. Just keep the arms moving. If, if you get tired, Try not to stop, move through it. Just keep doing the movement, the vibration. Keep it moving. Turn the palms back up, keep it moving. And now just rotate the arms down, up. This, this gives you some shoulder work, opening up the heart, squeezing the shoulder blades together in the back, turning the palms down, turning the palms up, turning the palms down, and now bring the arms all the way up. You should already feel heat in the pads of your hands and your fingers. Clasp your hands up at the top. See if you can find the index finger. 
and move the upper arms back behind the head. Lift up the heart and chest. Let's so start with a lateral side stretch to the right. Now begin to really use your breath. Inhale through the nostrils. And on the exhale, just gently move over to the right. As you lift up the heart and chest and feel the left side of the body opening, move the upper arms back behind the head. Now bring that right arm down, slightly roll that right shoulder back and straighten the left arm. Feel the whole left side body opening and bring the arm over the head. Inhale, come back to center. Let's bring the arm, right arm up, clasp again, point the index finger and do the lateral side stretch to the left, slowly opening up the right side body. Keep the breath moving. When you can, breathe through the nostrils. That Get some action going in your core when you inhale through the nostrils. Exhale, pull that navel into the spine, and then come back to center. All right, let's come down into a cactus pose, spreading the fingers wide, still activating, awakening the joints and glands. Bring the little finger to meet the thumb, the ring finger to meet the thumb, middle finger to meet the thumb, and the pointer. So just do that a couple of times, getting vibration and activity in all the joints and the fingers. Okay, squeeze, squeeze the fist, opening and closing, and then bring the arms back up and come down into the cactus pose. Elbows are still up. Now, if your arms are tired, bring them down and rest for a minute, but then come right back up and join me. We have to all start somewhere. Okay, inhale. Now we're gonna add the beneficial twist to our practice. We're gonna inhale, keep the knees forward and the hips forward, and turn to the right. So hips, hips stay forward, you're turning in the core. You're twisting to the right. Now you're squeezing and soaking all the internal organs around the heart, all the vital organs, just with this beneficial twist. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale. Inhale. And turn to the left. Take your time. You're bringing blood flow around the heart, around the abdominal, around the lungs. You're oxygenating your system with your breath. Come back to center. Okay, let's let the arms come down for a moment and just rest. And now I'm gonna turn around and I want you to check your flexibility in the arms. So bring both arms up, come down into cactus pose, and then drop the hands down, elbows are still up, and slowly move the hands back and place them on the back of your bum up here. And see if you can find your wrist or your elbows or arms. You're opening up the heart and chest with this pose. Some of you may be flexible enough to bend the hands in the back and come into a prayer pose in the back. Just test your flexibility with your arms and then let the arms hang down. All right, now, let me see the full range of motion in your arms. Let's do six of these big circles and just go easy. Wait till your body lets you in. Spread the fingers wide. We're just awakening the upper torso, waking up the joints and glands, waking up the cells. We've been sitting too long and not getting out doing things. So now is the time to awaken the physical body. And when you awaken the physical body, you also awaken your mind. All right, let's go forward with the arms if that's available to you. Now, if you have shoulder issues, you may not want to do this big full range of motion. You work up to the range of motion in your body. We have to wait till the body lets us in. We have to be patient. Okay, I'm feeling 
heat and warmth in the tips of my fingers and my arms, my upper chest. So I think we're getting close to getting this upper body, upper torso awakened. So just come into a slight straddle now and just sort of swing back and forth a little bit. Staying rooted and grounded in your feet if you can. You bring up one heel when you turn. Just a little bit of movement. Okay, let's come back to center. Now we're gonna make a transition and begin to think about our spine. This is my major key to quality longevity. The top key I have for quality longevity is a flexible, supple spine. So I'm gonna demonstrate this pose in a chair, which you can do in a chair or standing. We call this in our classes cat and cow pose. It can be done on your knees, but a lot of people have the knee issue, so you can do this in a chair or standing. So if, if you're seated, place the hands on the knees, inhale, let the heart come through the gates of the arms, get a curve in the backs, feel your sit bones rooted into the chair. On Begin to pull the navel into the spine as you round the shoulders over. Inhale, come up. Exhale. Inhale, come up. Exhale. Feel the low back opening, feel the upper back opening. Inhale, come up. Exhale. Now let's do this six more times in your own rhythm. Exhale, pull the navel into the spine. Feel the spine, spinal movement. You wanna get the spine activated every day. This is what holds you up in your life. A strong, flexible spine. One more, exhale, pull that navel into the spine, get round, and then come back up to neutral. Okay, we're gonna come to standing now. So try to use your core if you're coming up out of the chair, but you may need to hold on. You, you, you be the judge, I'm not there with you to watch, but be, be very careful, take, take care of yourself, do what works for you. Okay, we're gonna come to standing using our core muscles. So inhale, just slightly lean forward and come up to standing. And you can move the chair out of the way here. Or if you, if you, want, to, if you want to stay seated in the chair, you can do that as well. This part of our program is to energize the body. We've awakened it, but now we're really gonna to begin to energize it. So I want you to take your arms. We, we really worked on those arms earlier but now we're really gonna work them. So start flapping your arms like, like a bird. These, these are your wings. And then bring it up over your head. You're really, it's like you're trying to get something off your hands. You're shaking, shaking, shaking. But you are waking up the body. You're waking up the cells. You're waking up that vagus nerve. You're toning your vagus nerve and your nervous system by shaking, shaking, shaking the hands. And when you get tired, don't stop. Push it on through. Just keep shaking, 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 energizing the body. Energizing, energizing, energizing. Okay. And you can let the arms come down, but you should feel the heat in your fingers, in your, in your arms. All right, the next thing we're going to do, which is a prerequisite in my class and a top key to quality and longevity is getting up and down off the floor safely. Most of my class started at some point without being able to do that, but now they're all easily getting up and down off the floor. But if you don't want to try that today, please stay seated and watch this process. So I come to standing, like in Tadash in the mountain pose, and I'm going to hinge forward at the hips. But I'm not going to hang my head down. I'm just hinging forward at the hips, gently pushing the knees back. 
and, and you can bicycle your legs back and forth a little bit by pressing the knees back one at a time. And here you're really warming up the back of the knees, which really get neglected. This way, both knees are being pushed back. So instead of hanging the head down like this to get down to the floor, just stay with the back straight. Now, bend, bend the knees a little bit and just lean forward. And you come forward into what we call in class, the table pose. This is tabletop. A lot of people don't like to be on their knees here. But here, here you are down the floor. We're coming on our back now. So we're in tabletop. We're going to swing the hips over to the right and swing the legs out in front. So we're here. We're going to bend one knee at a time, bring the hands back a little bit behind the hips, and then just ease the hips toward the knees. Take hold of your knees and just ease yourself down. Now we're all in a on the floor on the mat. And now we're going to keep energizing the body. Now, you, those of you who are in a chair, you can do the same thing. We're going to raise the left leg up and the right arm and bring it down. And then the right arm and the left leg and bring it down. And just keep going back and forth, back and forth. But be careful with the spine in this pose because you don't want to hurt your low back. Keep pressing that spine into the mat when you bring up the weight of the legs and the weight of the arms. You have to be very conscious, very aware of what you're doing with the low back. So this is something you can do many, many times to build core strength and a strong back. So we'll do two more on each side with breath, always with breath and movement. Okay, last one here and here. Okay, bring the feet down on the mat, bend one knee at a time. So now both knees are bent and we're gonna come up to standing. So roll over to the side, brace yourself on one side, take your time coming up. And maybe you come back into tabletop position, curl the toes under, move the hips back on the heels. And then if you, if you have the stability, lift those knees up. You may want to have a chair handy to touch and then rise up, rise up with strength. Come on up and close the pose. So getting up and down off the floor is key for seniors. In case you fall, you've got to be strong enough to get up and down off the floor. This is such an important time as seniors to stay strong, to build up our immune system, to build up our bones. So we're gonna talk a little bit now about how yoga benefits strong bone health. The research is there, it doesn't matter I've had a yoga practice for over 20 years, but it is never too late to start. You can always build strong bones with a consistent yoga practice. So we do that by weight bearing poses that we do in yoga. So let's think about some of the weight bearing poses that we can do. So I'm gonna stand and move into a warrior one. Now you may wanna use the aid of a wall or a chair. Take a step forward and bend, bend the front knee as both arms come up. This is warrior one. And you wanna check that right knee. The right knee moves toward the little toe a little bit, not the big toe, but this is stability. You're building strength in your legs, in your lower torso. Spread the fingers wide. Breathe. And on the exhales, begin to straighten both legs as you bring both arms down. And with balance and strength, bring the left leg to meet the right. Inhale. Exhale. Step back with the right foot and come into the lunge and warrior one on the left side. Inhale. Bring both arms up, consciously aware of body movement and breath. Spread the fingers wide. 
Lift up the heart and chest. Check the alignment of that left knee. Maybe you move the left knee a little toward the little toe. You don't want the knee torqued over toward the right toe. So this is an advanced pose. And if you're not comfortable with this today, you'll build up to this. But this is a good strength building lower torso pose to build strong bones. So now fold the fingers over the thumb and use the weight and strength to bring the right leg to meet the left and stand tall. So that's one strong pose, warrior one. So now we're gonna do some balance poses where we're standing on one leg, bracing ourselves and building strength in the bones and legs there. So I'm gonna use the aid of the wall here and you can do the same thing at home. Roll up on your right toe. This is called the crane pose. You can also do this at your kitchen sink at home. Lift up that right knee and come into the position of a crane standing by the water. Try to straighten that left leg and lift up the chest and heart. And if you are balanced, see if you can bring up the right hand. Maybe stretch that right arm up. And if you wanna try the whole balance pose, you can remove maybe all but one finger. You can still leave one finger on the wall, but maybe some of you have the balance to let go and stand tall, breathe. Try to hold this for about three or four breaths. You feel strength building in the legs. Use your legs or lose your bones, either walking or doing these consistent weight-bearing yoga poses and bring the right hand down. Okay, let's turn to the left side. Inhale, roll up on the left toe. Lift up that left leg. Feel the strength in the right leg pressing down into the mat. If you feel a little Charlie horse or something playing in that left leg, you, you might want to swing it a little bit. Always stay aware, listen to your body. There's no gain in the pain. Okay, so now just try the crane pose now. If everything's okay in the back of the thigh, find your balance, maybe lift all but one finger off the wall. and then maybe let go and raise the opposite arm up. Balance and release down. Now remember, this is something you can do very easily at your kitchen sink. You're holding on to both hands at the kitchen sink and just lifting one, arm, one leg up and balance and then the other leg. So that's a good way to build bone and to take at least a 30 minute walk every few days in this beautiful warm weather we're gonna have. So con continue using your legs, using and building better bone strength. Okay, let's do another balance pose. Let's see, let's, let's come into a straddle first. Bring the arms out to the side, float forward, with a flat back. This is still balanced, even though both feet are on the mat. This is still good, a good balance pose because you're twisting the body. And bring the right arm down and the left arm up. And here's where I'm going to use a block, which if you have at home, you can use a block to, to place your hand on the block and then raise the left arm up. But you're still, you're still somewhat balancing the body. Exhale, bring the left arm down and the right arm comes up. You're finding stability in your feet. You're twisting the body. And now let go, bring, bring the hand, right hand down and rise up. Okay, heel toe your feet together. Heel toe the feet together to come back up to standing. Okay, let's bring the right arm out to the side. 
bend the right elbow and bring the right arm in front. Bring the left arm out to the side. I have to sneeze. All right, let's come back up to standing. And I want to do the uh, awakening and energizing the body pose again, because I want you to know how, how good this is for you. So let's start shaking the hands again. This is something that's gonna help you get rid of anger, frustration, disappointment, just by vibrating the hands and getting, getting the cells moving, releasing tension, anxiety. So shake, shake, energize, energize, energize. So whenever the going gets rough sometime, just try this energizing pose. Feel, feel the activity in the hands and then release them down. You feel all that energy in your arms and your fingers, which will bring us on to another pose. So I want to uh, try to open up the shoulders a little bit more now. So let's raise the right arm up, bring the left arm back behind you, turn that left arm down and bring it in the back, and then drop, drop the elbows down and see if you can touch in the back. This may not be available yet, but it will become so in time and then release the arm down and bring the other arm up, bend, bend it at the elbow, bring the other hand back behind and see if you can touch in the back. This is where you could use a strap. You can use a strap back here to catch, to help you find, find the bind with the hands and release out. So that's, that's some shoulder openers. Okay, let's do one more strength building in the lower torso with the chair pose. This is something we try to do in, in my classes, every class, because it's a core builder, bone builder, the chair pose. So come with your feet hip width apart and slightly bend the knees. Push the bum way out and back and let the hands rest on the thighs. Now just get comfortable here because the idea is to try to raise up one arm and then the other arm. So now we are in what we call the chair pose. And you can feel the heat building now in your feet, ankles, shins, calves, knees, thighs, hips. This is the chair pose. Inhale, rise up. Take a big breath in. Exhale, let's come down again. Now, if this is too much on your knees, just bring the arms up and slightly bend, bend the knees. You have to determine how strong your knees are, but you wanna build strength around the front and the back of the knees. Exhale, inhale, exhale. I'll do this from the side so you can see it from the side too. Inhale, as you bend the knees, slight, slightly bring the arms up. This is the chair pose. This, this will give you more strength, a better posture, more vitality. When, 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 you're, when we finally get to go back out to dinner again, or lunch, when you're seated at the table, you want to rise up strong. You don't want to have, necessarily have to use the aid of the table. You have strength in your legs strengthen your bones. This is the chair pose. You kind of rock back on your heels a little bit. Breathe and exhale. Okay, let's do one more strong chair pose. And come to standing. Okay, I'm a little out of breath now, so let's work on a pranayama practice. That's the breathing practices. That is really one of the most important things in yoga and definitely one of my keys to quality longevity is being aware of the breath. So let's all come to a seated position in a chair or on the floor if you're comfortable seated on the floor. But just close your eyes for a moment. Feel the space your body's occupying. And bring your 
deep, intimate awareness to your breath. Close the eyes and just begin to breathe slowly through the nostrils. You're filling up the lungs, pause, and then on the exhale, the navel pulls into the spine slightly as you exhale. Again, inhale, let's do it for the count of four. Hold for four, exhale for four. Three more times, inhale, hold, exhale. Two more, inhale through the nostrils, hold, exhale. Last one, inhale, hold, exhale. Now I invite you to stay consciously aware in your everyday life of the breathing apparatus that's available to you. We call it a three-part breath, the lower abdominal, up around the the rib cage in here, the rib cage, and then the upper chest. Three part breath, lower abdominal, rib cage, upper chest. So learn to use the whole breathing mechanism that's available to you. This is going to oxygenate your system and give you more energy and vitality. So let's close the eyes for a moment and just let's take three more deep breaths. Let's rise up out of the chair, come to standing with strength. Move the chair over to the side. We're gonna do one more balancing pose now that we've rested a little bit and found our breath, found our full three-part breath. We're, now we're going to finish our balance series with one more balance pose called the uh, railroad track. I'm gonna do it from the side so you can observe. Roll up on the right toe. This is, we started like this in the crane pose where we just lifted up that, bent the knee and lifted it up. Now we're gonna swing that leg out in front and bring the right heel to meet the left toe and find your balance here. You're gonna feel the body sway a little bit, bring it back to center. You can also use the wall, keeping a finger on the wall or your full hand on the wall. But find that this becomes weight bearing in both legs, building strong, a strong skeleton. So press your feet firmly into the mat, elongate that spine, lift up the heart and chest, and try to hold, hold the balance pose. And you can also always use your hands for balance. Remember, you can do this at the kitchen sink, or you can have your hands loose with your hand palms up for balance, or you can, you can hug your body, nourish your body with a hug, and that kind of keeps you centered and balanced. Or you can come up into a cactus pose. Anything that will keep you finding, shifting to your center, staying focused and shifted in your, back to your center. Okay, let's, let's all be here for a moment in a full three-part breath. Inhale, exhale. Try to breathe through the nostrils if you can. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Lift up the heart and chest. Move the fingers back. Spread the fingers wide. Inhale. Full three-part breath. Exhale. And release the hands down. Okay, let's turn around and go to the other side. Get rooted and grounded now in the standing leg, the right leg. Now I'm working on a thick rug with my yoga mat. If you have a hardwood floor and a yoga mat, that's probably better for these balanced poses. But let's do this railroad track on the left side. So get rooted and grounded in the right side. Push that right leg down. You're building strong skeleton in that right leg. Roll up on the left toe. You can touch the wall with your finger or your hand and bring the left foot out in front. 
You'll feel the body shift forward a little bit and then move back, finding your center, elongating the spine. And when you have found your center and you feel the breath calming down, no anxiety, no judgment, just do the best you can. Then maybe you can remove the finger and bring the hand somewhere on your body. You, you can hold the palms up for balance. You can hug the belly there. Anything to keep you elongating the spine, gently rolling the shoulders back, breathing, pressing down with the left foot and the right foot. This is a good balance pose to build a strong skeleton in the lower torso. And you can practice this for five minutes. It would be very good to practice your balance in the kitchen sink with this pose. And then release the arms down. And come back to center. All right. We're going to begin a cool down now and a relaxation. This is really and truly the most important part of the class. So I encourage you to find a comfortable place, either seated on a chair, maybe you want to elevate your knees or your feet, but we're gonna go through a little bit more breathing and relaxing the physical body. This is a mindfulness practice to bring our thoughts to the present moment, not the past, not the future, what's happening right now. We have to deal with what's happening right now, experience all these emotions, but try not to hang on to them. Take advantage of the time to get strong. So you can either come down on your mat, I'm gonna stay seated so I can see uh, the, the camera here, but I'll guide you through it, okay. All that's required in meditation or mindfulness practice is to be try to relax the physical body and the chatter in the mind. And we do that with breath awareness, which we have learned today, breath awareness. So just close your eyes in whatever comfortable position you're in. And this is where you might wanna use the blanket. You can cover yourself up with a blanket. And just begin to relax the physical body as you relax the mind. This is a gratefulness meditation. Think of what you're most grateful for now. Think of what your focus is now as more family and friends and being safe and living in San Diego. Beautiful climate. Well, just let your body relax. Let your neck and shoulders relax. Breathe through the nose if you can. You'll feel the coolness of the in-breath and the warmth of the out-breath. Let your attention focus up to the forehead center. And just be the observer for a couple of minutes here of the mind, the body, and your spirit. Slowing your breath down. Slowing the mind down. And being in the present moment, not the past, not the future, but what's happening right now. Being grateful that you were able to do the class. Setting your intention to come and do the class with me again. Relax your cheekbones. Relax the jaw, relax the neck and shoulders, relax your eyes, and most of all, relax the forehead. A full wave of relaxation from the top of the head all the way down through the body to the tips of the toes. 
Let's take a few more breaths here. Slow inhale and exhale. And now begin to normalize your breath. Now I invite you to come up to a seated pose when, when you're ready. You wanna pull one knee into the chest at a time, roll over to one side, and make your way up to a comfortable position either in the chair or on the floor to close our class. Let's close our class together by bringing our palms up. And this is called a mudra, a mudra of receptivity, being open and willing to change, being courageous to do our practices. And let's join the thumb and forefinger. This is another mudra. The thumb represents your past, and the forefinger represents a future that's unfolding before you, a future of better health better vitality, a stronger immune system. What we have in the middle is the present, the present moment. Not the past, not the future, but the present. So let's take all these practices and bring them up, bring them up into our forehead center, the spot between the two eyebrows, and into our heart center. Once again, inhale up, Bring all the practices into your forehead and your heart. I want you to remember to get plenty of rest during this difficult time and to stay hydrated. This is another key to quality longevity. I invite you to do every day is to stay well hydrated with water. I hope you can bring Silver Sage Yoga and Wellness classes this session into your everyday life. Make it fun, make it enjoyable. I hope you have time to listen to good music, call your friends or reach out on the telephone, a landline and actually talk and listen. Take a walk outside and lift somebody else up today and it will come back to you multiple times. I hope to see you soon in person, and I hope you'll continue to use all the guidelines to keep us safe and healthy. Namaste. Thank you for joining Silver Sage. Hope to see you again soon.